mixtures are formed by mixing together two or more substances in any ratio physically. The components or parts of a mixture retain their original properties. Because of these differences in properties, the components of a mixture can be separated easily. Before we start learning about separation techniques, we must learn about safety measures when working in a laboratory. 1. Take great care to follow the instructions of your teacher. 2. Do not taste or smell any chemical in the laboratory. 3. Do not leave flammable liquids near a flame. 4. Read labels twice before using any chemical to ensure you are using the correct chemical. 5. Handle sharp objects in glassware very carefully. 6. Always use wire gauze or a water bath for heating. 7. Wash your hands before leaving the laboratory. I think we're ready now. Let's take a closer look at separation methods. Number 1. Filtration is a simple technique used to separate insoluble solid matter from liquid matter, which have been mixed together. In filtration, a mixture is passed through a porous medium like filter paper. Liquid matter passes through the pores of filter paper, while the insoluble solid matter cannot. It is trapped on the surface of the filter paper. The mixture is separated into its components, that is, solid components and liquid components. As an example, have you ever seen tea being made? We want to make sure we don't drink up the tea leaves with our tea. So we pour it through a strainer. The strainer acts as our filter. It holds back the tea leaves. Number 2. The process in which a solid, when heated, changes directly into gas or a vapor state is called sublimation. We use this process to separate two components of a mixture in which one component has the ability to sublime. It is used to purify compounds. Let's see how this works. Time to experiment. You will need a china dish, watch glass, sand and naphthalene mixture, funnel, tripod stand, spatula, bunsen burner, wire gauze, cotton. Put the mixture of naphthalene and sand in a china dish. Place the china dish on a wire gauze that is placed over a tripod stand. Cover the china dish with an inverted glass funnel and plug in a little cotton at the opening of the stem of the funnel to collect the fumes of the sublimating substance. On heating the mixture in the china dish, white fumes evolve and rise inside the funnel. Stop heating when the white fumes stop rising and allow the funnel to cool. After cooling, remove the funnel from the china dish and using a spatula, transfer the solid naphthalene sticking on the walls of the funnel into a watch glass. The sand will be left in the china dish. So you recognize these tiny balls? These naphthalene balls are more commonly known as moth balls. They are used to prevent the presence of insects. Number 3. Distillation is used to separate a solvent from a solution. In this process, the solution is heated so that the solvent in it evaporates. The dissolved solute particles are left behind. The vapor is then cooled to condense into liquid. This liquid is called distillate. For example, if we boil sea water, it turns into steam and evaporates, leaving behind the salt particles present in the sea water. We can change the steam back into water by cooling it down. We can get drinking water from sea water using this method. This water is called distilled water. Time for an exercise. Label the diagram. Let's see how you did.
Let's summarize what we learned today. To prevent accidents in labs, we must follow proper safety procedures. Mixtures are separated by the following methods. Filtration is a process of separating insoluble solids from a mixture. Sublimation is a process of purifying a solid by vaporizing a solid substance and condensing the vapors to form the solid directly without passing through a liquid state first. Distillation is a process of purifying a liquid by boiling it and letting it evaporate into steam and leaving the solid constituents behind in the container. The steam is then cooled down into water. This is condensation.